my amazing ALS learners. Ako si Tutor Samantha, ang inyong tutor now on TV. Ako ang tutor na nangangako sa inyo naggagabayan kayo para we could enjoy our journey in learning the language. Welcome to Itulay Online Tutorial. Ang Itulay na tutulay sa pangarap ng bawat ALS learners. Today, we are going to talk about critical reading. Are you a critical reader? That's the title of our lesson. This is a part of your quarter two, week two module. Are you ready, ALS learners? To be able to learn that, we have the following objectives. Number one, Identify imperfect information in a text read. Two, use critical reading strategies in materials read. And lastly, evaluate the relevance and worth of ideas in reading materials. Are you ready, us learners? Go get your modules and pens. Tayo ay matuto ng sama-sama. Let us start our discussion with a game na siguradong would tickle our mind. This game is entitled, Can You Guess the Phrase? In this activity, I will show you words and images and you are going to guess what words or phrases it is trying to represent. Are you ready? Do you think it would be easy? Let's see. I have here an example before you try it on your own. Look at this word. It forms the word generation. But oh, there's a space and a blank in between. Could it be space generation? Or is it generation in between? Or maybe it's generation gap. Let's see if we are correct. Is it generation gap? Yes, it is generation gap. Are you ready to try it on your own, ALS learners? Try this one. What word or phrase can you form from this word and images and their arrangement? Thinking time in five, four, three, two and one what's your answer it's moral support you are correct that's a good start us learners now try this example what word or phrase can you associate from this word and this arrangement Thinking time in five, four, three, two, and one. Your answer is? That's correct. Crossroads. Congratulations, my dear amazing us learners. Ang galing nyo naman pala maghula ng mga terms and words. Maganda bang activity natin? Nag-enjoy ba kayo? How were you able to guess the words or phrases? What helped you in guessing this? Some of you may use the arrangement of the words, right? Some of you may also use the position of the clue like the given blanks. Those strategies can also apply in reading. So now, we have another fun activity. This time, we are going to read and do an exercise. Are you excited? I am. Let's read all together as learners. This exercise is called Waving Hands by the Lake. It is good for regulating breathing and maintaining the balance of blood pressure. It is also good for strengthening the function of kidney, calming the nerves, and relieving pain, arthritis, or pain. 
do this exercise daily. This reading activity will make us move, pero magkakaroon tayo ng magandang feeling. Are you ready? Follow my instructions as I tell you what to do. Waving hands by the lake. First, stand with feet apart, hands down. Next, breathe slowly. Inhale the fresh air. Think that you are breathing the breeze by the lake. Then, exhale it gradually. Now, slowly raise your arms to chest level. Bend your knees to lower your hips. Again, breathe slowly, feeling the air in and out of your lungs. Next, slowly put your hands down to your sides and return to the original position. As you go back to your former position, slowly breathe again. How do you find the activity? Do you think it was easy and clear? Can you do the exercise smoothly? Do you think tama ba itong passage na to about waving hands by the lake? Bakit? Mm, tama kayo. It's not in order because this passage is trying to give instructions on how to do an exercise. Kaya dapat logical and accurate ang mga steps na binibigay. See, we are just doing a simple exercise, but we should be very careful whatever it is that we are reading. Anything na binabasa natin, kasi minsan, yung binabasa natin may be incomplete, illogical, o kaya naman, sometimes it's not even clear. Kaya, my dear us learners, you should always be careful with imperfect information sa lahat ng binabasa natin. Tutor Samantha, ano ba ang imperfect information? Good thing na tanong natin because that is what we are going to talk about next. Since you are now relaxed and calm, I think you are ready to fill your minds with more information. In this next activity, we are not only going to look for imperfect information, but we are also going to gauge how critical reader you are. This activity is called looking for imperfect information. Now, what we are going to do is I will show you some passages and texts and we are going to read it aloud together and identify the imperfect information. Are you ready? I am also. Let's try the first one. As learners, open your eyes, sharpen your minds, and let's read aloud together. March 12, 2020. Dear Nena, how are you? I'm glad that your classes will be over soon. Have you made any plans for the summer? On the first week of April, San Roque, our town, will celebrate its annual fiesta. There will be a lot of food. I heard that the town mayor organized variety shows and other activities. I'm sure it would be fun. Your cousins from Mindanao are coming over for the fiesta. Would you like to come too? I know that you will be traveling alone. If you plan to come here, just go to the pier and buy a ticket. I can't wait to see you. Love, Aunt Miling. Which information in this letter do you think is an imperfect information? Thinking time in five, four, three, 
two, and one. Let's see if you're correct. The correct in perfect information here is just go to the pier and buy a ticket. And why is that so? It has incomplete information. Kasi Aunt Miling knew that Nena will be traveling alone. Pero di niya nilagyan ng complete instruction on how to get there. So it would be very hard for Nena to visit her. Was it easy? Let's try another one. You did very well on the first letter. Now we have a passage here. As learners, open your eyes, sharpen your minds, and let's read aloud together. When we got to the hospital, my mom was jumpier than a Mexican jumping bean. But then we saw that grandma was awake. Mom's face lit up like a light bulb. And when grandma hugged me, my heart lit up like a volcano ready to erupt. What is the imperfect information here? Thinking time in five, four, three, two, and one. Let's see if you were able to get the correct answer. The correct answers are actually jumpier than a Mexican jumping bean, light, light lit up like a light bulb, and like a volcano ready to erupt. Why is that so? Because it's too worthy and it uses figures of speech na hindi naman direct to the point. Kaya di siya clear at medyo confusing. Let's compare this to a better version of this paragraph. Let's compare. We got to the hospital, my mom was worried. But when we saw that the grandma was awake, my mom was happy. And when grandma hugged me, my heart beat fast. So instead of saying jumpier than a Mexican jumping bean, we have here was worried. And we say happy instead of saying lit up like a light bulb. And lastly, we say here heart beat fast instead of saying like a volcano ready to erupt. What have you noticed now? Diba? It becomes easier and direct to the point. Kaya when we encounter reading materials like above, na may jo may maraming unnecessary words, you need to look up the meaning of it in the dictionary. Think of the simpler or even the simplest term para mas maiintindihan ang binabasa mo. Diba? It is fun, isn't it? Let's try on the third time if your luck is still on hold. As learners, open your eyes, sharpen your minds, and let's read aloud together. Anna is three years old. Her mother asked her to go to the market to buy food and other groceries for the coming town fiesta. What is the imperfect information here? Thinking time in five, four, Three, two, and one. Let's see if you were able to get the correct answer. The incorrect or imperfect information here is the age of Anna. Yes, it's not realistic for her age to go to the market and buy groceries for fiesta. The age is illogical. So beware of information that are illogical. This information are the information that, does, that doesn't go well. So ibig sabihin, hindi siya connected or hindi siya tama nararapat sa text na iyong binabasa. This time, this example is quite tricky. So be careful. As learners, open your eyes, 
sharpen your mind, and let's read aloud together. The best way to reach the town of Maligaya is to take a jeepney ride from Malibuso. You can also take a bangka ride. Maligaya is a town bursting at the seams with activity. It is like a sleeping giant. What is the imperfect information here? Thinking time in five, four, three, two, and one. Actually, there are two sets of information that are imperfect. And these are the first one, the best way to reach the town of Malikaya is to take jeepney ride from Malibuso. And that is an incomplete information. We don't know and we were not given any information how to get there. And next is Maligaya is a town bursting at the seams with activities. It is like a sleeping giant. This information is quite conflicting with each other. Now, this reading material is very tricky. These parts are are composed of confusing ideas. So be careful when reading these kinds of materials. This would be the last one as learners. So be ready to read it carefully. As learners, open your eyes, sharpen your minds, and let's read aloud together. Mang Jose is a farmer who is poor as a rat. He has three children who all go to exclusive schools. Mang Jose is kind and generous to his neighbors. He sells them water from his new well. He donates a lot of money to charity. Mang Jose is indeed Robin Hood personified. What is the imperfect information here? Thinking time in five, four, Three, two, and one. Let's see if you are correct. The imperfect information here is the description of Mang Jose as a poor rat. Look at Mang Jose. How can he donate a lot of money he is if he is described as a poor and poor as a rat? Imagine that as learners. Isn't it confusing and conflicting information? You did well on that activity. Good job, my dear us learners. You did very well in identifying imperfect information. Mukhang you have your own strategies na, ha, my dear us learners, in discovering the correct information. Now, we could use those strategies in reading as well. This time, we are going to learn together kung ano ba yung mga skills and strategies we need to know and to develop to practice critical reading. So we are going to talk about critical reading skills and strategies. So as learners, paano ba tayo makaka-develop ng skills and strategy to be a critical reader? To do that and to know that, we are have here a robust puzzle. We have here descriptions and you are going to identify the word. First description. I have seven letters. Before and after each letter, there are vertical lines. Can you guess what I am? Medyo mahira pa, di ba? Here is another clue. I am a word. My first letter is R. My middle letter is D. And the last letter is G. Before and after each letter, there are vertical lines. Can you now guess the word? Para mas madali, you can write like R, D, G, and guess it. Now, as learners, can you guess the word? You're correct. Very good. It's reading. Pero may vertical lines na sinasabi. So we will write like this. Reading. What is now the phrase being referred to? And based on how the word reading is written, very good. It should be reading between the lines. 
now that we were able to understand that reading between the lines is the key for us to have skills and strategies, we have here some more steps for you to develop critical skills and strategy. We have here the first one, to find clues and infer. What do we mean by this? Let's try to read between the lines and find the clues and infer the meaning or in this passage, who is being described. Let's try to use the strategy of reading between the lines and infer the meaning through identifying the clues in this passage. Let's try to identify who is being described in this passage. Let's read together. I am pure. I explore my wing and see how fast I can go racing with the wind. I leap, I fly, I love. I can't believe the beauty of the wonderful earth. I go to waterfall, sprinkling droplets on my face. I think I will remain airborne and pure. Who do you think is being described here? Thinking time in five, four, three, two, and one. You are correct. The clues that we have here are white feathers, silk satin, pure, lifting and airborne who could be being described from these words hmm. you are also now correct we are trying to describe an angel were you able to get it correctly good job and that's how you practice reading between the lines and also inferring or getting the information from the clues that you will get from the word or the passage that you are reading do you think you can do that also i'm sure you can let's go to the next step the next step you can do is to read aloud because when we read aloud we know and reflect on our own we were able to read aloud and infer the meaning of the text that we are reading when we do this strategy let's try if we can do that let's read this one all together beware of what you expect blank hmm for your expectation may become a self-fulfilling prophecy. What do you think is missing here? Why? What is self-fulfilling prophecy? Uh, I need to read further to see if I can get the meaning of this term. Self-fulfilling prophecy occurs when a person's expectation of an event makes the outcome more likely to happen you were able to get the meaning okay now i understand self-fulfilling prophecy but i need to know more about it i need more examples to understand it better first expect to become nervous and botched the job interview and later did so what is the meaning of the word botched? Can I find a clue here? Is nervous a clue for botched? Let me check with the dictionary. Oh yes, it means clumsy. When I'm nervous, I tend to be clumsy, don't I? And an example passage for us to develop that last step to have critical skills and strategies for critical reading, we have this passage. Let's analyze this one and let us know together what are the key ideas in the passage. 
Starting a stamp collection can be quite a challenging task. It takes a lot of preparation and planning. First of all, you have to prepare the materials that you will need for stamp collection. You would need to have an album to place your stamps in. Then, you need to plan your collection. Are you going to focus on a theme or topic? Some stamp collectors only accept stamps that predicts a particular subject like flowers. Some collects only stamp that shows faces of people. Others just collect stamps regardless of themes or topics. Like in any other hobby, stamp collecting is a worthwhile activity, but you need to plan before engaging in it. What do you think is the key ideas or what do you think are the key ideas in this passage? And that is correct, my us learners. The key idea and the main conclusion natin sa passage na to is stamp collection, as in any other hobby, need to be planned well before engaging in it. So it's easy to identify key ideas and make conclusion. As learners, always remember when we think of critical reading, we can follow these steps. First, find clues and infer. Ibig sabihin, maghanap tayo ng mga pwede nating ma-relate sa mga words na ating binabasa. And infer, mag-guess tayo. Also, we can do read aloud. Read for you to reflect also what you are reading for you to understand better. And it would also help you in in improving your pronunciation. And of course, lastly, get the key ideas and conclusion. Do not dwell so much in reading all the information kasi minsan ang dami-dami nating nababasa, ang hirap na intindihin kung ano yung binabasa natin. So just look for the key ideas and make conclusions as you read the passage or the text that you are reading. And lastly, that yeah, included in the critical reading is examining the information carefully. And in gathering information, my dear us learners, we learn from the previous activity, we should always examine the information carefully. You can do that by first checking if it's complete and adequate. Lahat ba ng mga information na nakukuha mo ay nararapat sa nababasa mong teksto? At kung ito ba ay mga akmang informas information and included ba siya or related ba siya sa the rest of the text? We also need to consider logical. Of course, you should also check if it's logical. Dapat mababasa or nababasa natin yung mga information na tuwid o naaayon sa rules of reasoning na tinatawag. Dapat may sense siya sa atin. And lastly, it should be accurate. Hanapin natin kung ang mga information na ba na nababasa natin sa mga text ay totoo o tumpak, kung may basis ba ito, meron ba tong references sa mga information na makukuha natin sa ating mga binabasa. So remember that, ha? adequate and complete, logical, accurate information para tayo ay magiging critical readers. Time flies when we enjoy the most talaga, my dear us learners. Thank you again for joining me in this amazing journey to master the language. But before I bid my goodbye, keep in mind, my dear us learners, that we need to have critical reading and always practice careful examination of information dahil ito ay makakatulong sa atin upang tayo ay hindi madaling maninlang at magkaroon tayo ng tamang desisyon kagaya na lang sa social media at even sa television. Dapat alam natin kung ang mga binabasa ba natin pinapanood ng mga informasyon ay paniniwalaan natin dahil ito ay ginawa o binasa natin critically. Sa pang-araw-araw din natin buhay, magagamit natin ang critical thinking and reading. Hindi lamang tuwing tayo ay magsasagot ng modules ha, dahil sa buhay natin, remember as learners, marami ding imperfect information at confusing details but if you will open your eyes sharpen your minds and you will be surely ready to face anything 
mga amazing us learners, ang inyong pangarap ay abot kamay basta sama-sama tayo magsusumikap. Asahang andito kami ang inyong itulay family, sama-sama natin itutulay ang pangarap. Muli, ako si Tutor Samantha, ang Tutor Now on TV, ang inyong tutor na handa kayong gabayan sa inyong journey in learning the language. Maraming salamat. Hanggang sa muli. Bye, Als Learners!